Okay, so I thought I would go ahead and share some passing tips based on my own personal experience and thoughts on the matter. So the first, these are um, these are passing tips, you know, for people for you know male to female transsexuals or at least you know male male born transsexuals. And so anyway, the first two tips are. More about, I guess, kind of, you know, just attitude and and feelings, I guess. So the first one that I think is really important is be yourself. You know, you know, if you, I think it's probably fairly common for people when, you know, when they're first transitioning to maybe kind of overdo it because you know when you know when you're like a teenager and in your early 20s that's when you start to figure out who you are and what your style is and whatever and if you didn't get that benefit of you know being a teenage girl then then you know that's something you're going to have to do maybe a little later in life and you know so you might be trying different things to see what suits you but also i think people they want to make it very clear to the rest of the world, you know, that they're a woman. So they might tend to overdo it and, and, and try to present these very, you know, like stereotypical sort of feminine signals. You know, wearing the skirts all the time and the high heels and the makeup and, and, and on and on, trying to be, you know, super extra girly. But the thing is, if being super extra girly is not who you are, then that's going to look out of place, you know, it's not going to look right. And people, it's going to make people, you know, wonder. You know, it's just the same as you look, you look at somebody, for example, who, you know, is getting into, say, goth, you know, and they're dressing all goth and everything, but it doesn't suit them. It's not who they are. And so they kind of look out of place. But then you have other people, like you look at somebody, for example, like say Rob Zombie. And, you know, if you see Rob Zombie, you know, dressed a certain way, well, yeah, you know, Rob Zombie is a guy who's into horror movies and he's, you know, directed horror movies. So him having a more kind of goth style or whatever, that totally suits him. You know? So you got to find out what suits you. And try not to, you know, and just, just be yourself whatever that happens to be. You know, part of the problem, I think, is within the trans community, I don't know how true this is now, but I know this was this was true in the past, at least in certain segments of the trans community, where there was this idea that if you weren't super girly and feminine, that you weren't a real transsexual. But the thing is, there are plenty of women who are not, you know, that girly or feminine. And so if it's okay for a cisgendered woman to be a tomboy, then what's wrong with a trans woman being a tomboy? Or maybe being just a little bit girly. You know, you don't have to be super, super high femme or whatever. You know, in fact, you can be fairly butch, you know. So you need to be yourself. You know, whatever that happens to be, you know, try to, you know, figure out who you are and that's who you need to be. Don't try to be something you're not. Mm -hmm. The other, the other important attitude to have is to give no fucks. Because you are going to get, you know, disapproval. You know, there you're going to get disapproval from your family, from, you know, you might get disapproval from friends. You know, you may get disapproval from, you know, other people in society. You know, and you're just going to have to learn to deal with that and just to give no fucks because, you know, you're doing this for yourself, not for other people. You're doing this for your own personal happiness. And, of course, you do want to be mindful of safety issues and you do, you certainly do want to concern yourself with what other people think if it's a genuine safety issue, but otherwise, who cares? You know, if, if somebody out there in the world sees me and they can tell that I'm trans... You know, as long as they keep it to themselves and don't make an issue of it, I don't fucking care. You know, I mean, if I can conduct myself in the world and I can use the women's bathroom and whatever without issue, I really don't care. I really don't care if some random schmo on the bus, 
you know, sees me and they can tell that I'm trans. I, I really don't care. You know, I mean, it's really not that important for me to be perceived as 100% female by everybody. You know, and I suspect this is even going to be less of an issue when I get sex reassignment surgery because I'll be effectively female at that point. So if somebody ever did perceive me as a man, well, they would just be simply wrong. I mean, it wouldn't be much different than any other woman being perceived as, as a man. So, so it's really important to not care too much about what the rest of the world thinks, because there are plenty of people in the world who don't approve of this. You know, there are plenty of people that think, you know, we're sinners and we're going to go to hell, or that we're mentally ill, or whatever, you know? So we need to learn to be tough and just to not not care so much about what other people think. Okay, so now, now I'm going to talk more about actual physical stuff, actual more concrete stuff and not so much of the more nebulous kind of attitude stuff. So first thing is you got to get rid of the facial hair because that's something that's a very clear gendered sign. You know, people with su su substantial amounts of facial hair will get viewed as men. You know, there are women, there are, you know, females who have, you know, substantial amounts of facial hair, and it's it's pretty common for people like that to get viewed as men. So, got to gotta deal with the facial hair. And the only two methods that are really worth a damn are laser and electrolysis. Now, laser, under FDA rules, they cannot advertise permanent hair removal, only permanent hair reduction. And so the laser can get a lot of the hairs, but it may not get all of them. And in my case, when I was doing laser, some of my hairs turned white and the laser will not be able to get white hairs. And it's also not going to be effective with certain skin colors. But the one advantage laser does have is that the sessions are really quick. I, I was able to get from the time I walked in the door to the time I walked out. I was able to get my neck and my entire face done in about 10 minutes. I mean, it's super quick. And, you know, and you do it, you know, once a month. So it's, it's definitely a good deal. Downside, though, is the price. Laser is kind of expensive, but, you know, what can you do? And what I've done is to take, to make up for what the laser didn't take care of, I'm... I'm finishing up with electrolysis. Electrolysis is the one method that can advertise permanent hair removal. Electrolysis is, you know, completely 100% effective. You know, it's just a matter of, you know, sometimes the hairs may need to be zapped more than once, but once the hair follicle is dead, it is dead and no more hair will grow back. Now, the downside to that is it's done one hair at a time and so currently my sessions are an hour at a crack and I've been going about once a week and I've still got a bunch more to go so that's you know that's that's a downside and also the other downside is cost um currently I'm paying ninety five dollars for an hour of of the electrolysis and when I stopped doing the laser lady had raised her price so it would have cost me like 300 bucks to do a session on my face and my neck so both of these methods are not cheap but they work and they're really the only methods that really do work and with either of these methods you want to make sure you go to somebody who's competent you know you know you I mean the lady who was doing my laser she's a registered nurse although in her, and although I think she did not do as good a job as she should have, because when you get the laser initially, you're supposed to, you know, you go once a month, but then you go every six weeks to take it, to take into account the fact that the hair growth slows down. But she only had me going once a month, so I don't know what's up with that. And, you know, I didn't bother, I never bothered to complain, and so at this point, I'm just not even going to worry about it and just finish up with the electrolysis. But anyway... The uh, the lady that I'm going to now is a um, she is a uh, a licensed you know electrologist so make sure that you go to an actual legit person 
and you want to st one thing you do you want to stay away from all the gimmicks there's so many hair removal gimmicks out there and like I said the only two things that really do work are laser and electrolysis all those like home hair removal gimmicks they don't work they don't work effectively anyway if you can't afford to do laser or electrolysis right now the most effect the best thing to do is just gonna be just good old-fashioned shaving yeah I know it sucks to have to shave regularly but it is what it is so if you can't afford to do the laser or electrolysis right now just shave and save up your pennies you know don't waste your money with all those gadgets you see on the infomercial I don't care how great they make them look they all do not work okay there, there was one gadget on the market. It was a, an electrolysis gadget that was did actual real electrolysis. Where, you know, with electrolysis, they, you know, they stick a needle down into your hair follicle and then run an electric current, and that's what this gadget did. The downside, though, is that you're doing it on yourself, which is going to be kind of tricky. You know, looking in the mirror. And the other thing too is, if say you got a friend to do it, then you run the risk of somebody who's maybe um not qualified to do that doing it and potentially you know screwing it up and you know and causing problems so even even with the few the few gadgets that were available that actually worked you're still better off going to a professional cuz they really know what they're doing and yeah i know it sucks especially when you're poor but you know, you're just better off. Any money that you would spend on silly gadgets, you're just better off spending it on laser or electrolysis or both. Okay. The next thing you want to do is you're going to want to go on hormones because hormones will cause, you know, um, secondary sex characteristics changes. So, you know, breast growth and you'll get some redistribution of fat on your body including on your face and the younger you are when you start the hormones the more effective it is like you look at some of these trans women who have started you know say transitioning in when they're teenagers or in their early twenties and they've gotten really wonderful effects from the hormones and they look really good so yeah hormones are a definite must and I think they've, they've definitely made a difference in my case. They certainly do. And for the hormones, you need to go to a doctor and get the you know, proper checkups and blood work and everything. I know that for those of you who are poor, there's the temptation to just go through the online pharmacy and self-medicate. And I really, really, really suggest you don't do that. If at all possible, go to a proper doctor. You know really it's just it's just a much better thing to do but if you absolutely cannot go to see the doctor um, first off you need to make sure to do lots and lots and lots of research so you know what you're getting yourself into you know f you know just spend a lot of time online looking at resources on what to start with and one of the things you need to be careful of is there's the temptation to start off at the full, you know, the full dosage. You know, right now I'm taking uh, 200 milligrams of spironolactone, which is the testosterone blocker, and 600 milligrams of est and six milligrams of estrogen. And you know, and you really want to start off nice and slow. That's that's how they that's how the doctors do it. And yeah, it kind of sucks. You want to jump straight into doing six milligrams of estrogen, but don't. You need to start off nice and slow and, you know, look at the guidelines online and follow the best guidelines you can. And you want to make sure that you're getting your hormones from a reputable source. One of the places that I've actually dealt with, you know, for is an in-house pharmacy. I think their current URL is inhousepharmacy.biz. They're uh, an online pharmacy based out of uh, Vanuatu, and I've I've actually ordered some stuff from them in the past, and they are they're reputable. I don't know about other places, but you want to make sure that you get your stuff from a reputable place, 
because y you know you never know what you're going to get in unless you know the place is reputable and but ideally like i said you really ought to go to a regular doctor if at all possible but if you can't you know just be as safe as you possibly can and you want to make sure that you avoid things like smoking while you're on hormones because that could lead to heart disease that could lead to deep vein thrombosis you know where you get a, like a blood clot in your leg and then the blood clot can break free and you can end up with a pulmonary embolism or a stroke or whatever and that would be bad so yeah get on hormones and make sure that you do it safely you know and keep in mind that the hormones take time you're not going to get magical results overnight it's going to take several months before you really start noticing results and yeah I know it sucks and you're gonna be impatient but just stick with it and make sure to take your hormones as prescribed every single day okay the next thing and this is one that's super important and I don't think enough emphasis is on this is uh, placed in the trans community and that is you wanna develop a female voice because I don't care how great you look if you open your mouth and you sound like a man people are gonna read you as a man that's all there is to it and some people get tempted you know to do things like uh, getting vocal cord surgery that's something that Caitlyn Jenner mentioned looking into and I will tell you right now vocal cord surgery is a really 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 bad idea and there's no reason to do it it is possible for a male to sound like a female without the use of surgery. The trick is to the, tr the trick is just to, to use only the bottom half of your vocal cords because you see males have longer vocal cords than females and so like when when females go on testosterone it lengthens their vocal cords and that's why you trans men sound like men instead of sounding like women so the trick is for us to just use the bottom half of our vocal cords and I used a technique discovered by uh, Melanie Ann Phillips and I will put a link to her website in the video description so you can check out her information and just you know she's got some DVDs you can order but I just used the information she had up on her website years ago and I'm guessing that's the same information these days so check her stuff out and uh, so and give it a try and you know it's the kind of thing that just takes practice but you definitely want to put the time into practice and if you're in a situation where you know having a female voice 24 7 might be a bit of a problem you want to make sure to practice at times when you have a lot of time where you can where, where it'd be okay for you to do a female voice because when you first develop a female voice it's possible that your voice might get stuck like that you know and if you're in a situation where you really can't be talking like a female all the time you know you're gonna need to you know to have some time to let your voice relax and go back to where it was but once but once you've developed the voice then you know and you've really gotten it down then you can just switch back and forth you know at the drop of a hat so let me give you a little demonstration so I can be sounding like my voice right now and I can easily just at the drop of a hat I can change my voice and I can sound the way I used to as you can see my old voice sounded a little different so and then of course like I was just able to switch right back to a female voice and I've noticed that occasionally my voice still slips a little bit so what I do when I feel my voice slipping I just do a 10 count and I might you know like put my fingers two of my fingers on my neck to feel the vibrations on my vocal cords to make sure that I get little to no vibration on the top of my vocal cords so I'll just so I'll just count like this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and my voice is a little off right now but it's alright and so I believe that developing a female voice has been one of the most important things for me because my appearance is not 100%. I'm sure there are plenty of people that kind of wonder, 
or maybe think that maybe I am a man or whatever. But if I'm dealing with somebody and I open my mouth and I sound like a woman, because most people don't realize that it's possible for males to sound like females, they're just going to assume that I'm female because I sound like one. And that's going to help offset anything about my appearance that's maybe a little bit off. So, so yeah. Oh, and another thing about female voice, it, it's not about pitch. A lot of people think it's all about raising your pitch. It's not. Now, when you switch to a female voice, your pitch may go up a little bit naturally, but it's not about having a higher pitch because there are plenty of females with lower pitched voices, but they don't sound like men. I can lower my pitch down, but I don't sound like a man. I just sound like a woman with a lower pitched voice. And some people find lower pitched voices in women rather sexy. So yeah, it's not about pitch. Like if you've ever noticed like, you know, say a man trying to sound like a chick and, and he just raises his pitch, he doesn't sound like a woman, he just sounds like a man speaking in a high pitched voice. So yeah. The voice is absolutely critical. I think that's one of the most important things because that makes a huge difference. You know, you want to get you want to get your voice to the point where when you're dealing with somebody on the phone and they have no other markers to go by except your voice, you will get called ma'am 100% of the time. That's the goal. Okay? So now I'm going to talk a little bit about maybe things that you should avoid doing. You want to be careful with your appearance about making your appearance too extreme. Because really what you want is you just kind of want to be a regular chick, you know? You don't want to stand out. You know, you want to, if your appearance is going to be significantly different from the rest of the women where you live, you're going to stand out, you're going to draw attention to yourself, and people are most likely to, you know, to read you as a man. You know, if, you know, if you look like you ought to be in a drag show, then you might want to tone it down. You know, and, you know, if you're the genderqueer sort of person and you want to, <clears throat> you know, you want to express the more, you know, gender fluid or whatever part of yourself... Well, just keep in mind that if you're dressing in ways that are more more likely to transgress gender norms, depending on where you live, that's something that might stand out and people are going to be more likely to to notice that you're a, you're a dude. So you might so you might want to be careful with that. And you know, maybe just spend some time observing like the women in your area like what do just regular old women look like? I mean, currently, I'm actually dressing, you know, kind of like a bit of a tomboy, you know. I've just been doing, you know, I've just been doing, you know, like jeans and a t-shirt. Oh, and one of the things, I, for, you know, as far as um, your clothing goes, I think it definitely helps that even if you are just going to do something like jeans and a t-shirt, I think it definitely helps to do women's clothing. Like, take t-shirts, for example. Men's t-shirts tend to have the same kind of neck style, you know, a little crew neck or whatever. I personally like v-necks. And so, by wearing a style, a, a neck style that's not common on men's shirts, that kind of adds a sort of a feminine touch without being overly girly, you know? And, you know, because we still live in a society where people tend to shop for clothing that is directed at whatever sex they are. So, you know, men will generally buy men's clothing and women will generally buy women's clothing. Even for the same type of item, whether it's a t-shirt, a jeans, or whatever. So if you're wearing shirts that are intended for women and they're styled differently enough from, you know, men's, then people, I think, are going to pick up on that subtly. So... So yeah, just avoid, you know, avoid being too extreme with your with your clothing. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean you're certainly entitled to wear what you want, but just keep in mind, you know, how people are going to perceive that, you know? You know, if you're wearing, you know, crazy outfits, you know, and it kind of looks like you're maybe getting ready for Halloween, then you want to be careful. 
and you know and pay attention to the kinds of feedback you get if you get a bunch of you know negative feedback about what you're wearing you might want to rethink what you're wearing you know or if you just happen to really like what you're wearing then you can just ignore the negative feedback i mean it's up to you but i the, you know these days i definitely appreciate not really standing out i appreciate just kind of doing my thing and not having, you know, not having people harass me over it. I mean, in the past, you know, back when I wasn't on hormones, I mean, I was getting, you know, verbally harassed, you know, on a regular basis. People would al always say shit to me. These days, these days, people don't say anything negative to me, typically. I mean, I haven't been called names for being a tranny in a long time now. So... You know, and these days I'm just able to function more or less as a normal woman. I mean, I can walk into the women's bathroom, no problem. You know, and it's not a big issue. And another thing, on on that specific issue, you know, you want to get your, your documentation changed over, if you know. So, you know, you want to get your name changed. And if you live in a state that allows you to change the sex designation on your uh, ID... You want to do that. I've done that both in California and Washington because you can do that in these states without having had sex reassignment surgery. You just have, you know, you just have your doctor fill out the appropriate form. And so that's really helpful. You know, it's nice to have that as a backup. So if you say go into the women's bathroom and somebody makes an issue of it, you always can pull that, that out and show people if absolutely necessary, you know. So that's the only reason I've gotten it done. Just so I've got that at my disposal. If anybody questions, you know, the bathroom that I'm supposed to be in, I can just show them my ID and that should defuse the situation. Now, when you're dealing with, you know, say something like a locker room at a gym, that's going to be a whole other issue and you're going to want to contact the gym and find out what the deal is with them. You know, but once I get sex reassignment surgery, I'm not even going to worry about any of this stuff because, you know, if I get a gym membership, I'm just going to go use the women's locker room like nothing and not worry about it. And at that point, if anybody makes issue of it, well, they can go fuck themselves because I'll, I'll have pretty much, you know, just as much of a right as they are to use the uh, women's locker room. But yeah, I'm so... So I hope I hope I hope these tips are are useful to people, and I may go ahead and make some uh, videos in the future. But just to kind of recap, you know, you want to just be yourself. You know, I mean, be yourself. Don't try to be something you're not, because it's gonna look out of place. You know, give no fucks. Don't don't worry too much about what other people think. You're doing this for yourself, not for other people. And you want to get rid of the facial hair and use actual proven methods like laser and electrolysis. Stay away from the gimmicks. Go on hormones and preferably, you know, from a doctor. <coughs> and one of the most important is, is you need to develop a female voice because that's super, super critical, I think. And also, just don't get too crazy with your appearance, you know? I mean, because you don't want to draw necessary attention to yourself. So, yeah. So I guess I guess that'll do it, and I may go ahead and revisit this issue at some point in the future. And if anybody, if any other trans people have any any suggestions and maybe tips that have worked for them, please feel free to share them in the comment section. And as always, my comment section will be open to anybody, and I generally don't censor people. So go ahead and say whatever you want. And I guess that'll that'll do it for now.